Hi guys, this is Rob here. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the relationship between locus control and, and space and unhelpful thinking styles. This just helps to clarify the relationship in the mind between, for clients, in the mind between um, locus control and what they're thinking and the depth and the severity of their thinking styles. I did talk about this a couple of days ago on an emetophobia vid. First of all, why did we rename uh, locus control as space, sense of power and control over our environment or sense of power and control over our experiences? Well, our locus of control quiz isn't a pure locus of control quiz. Also in there, we are testing for... Um, um, how powerful a person feels uh, in, a, in a number of domains, but also their, their, their general self-efficacy. Not only what they believe, but actually how much effort they're willing to put in and what they're willing to do about it and how strong their belief is. So it's not a pure locus of control quiz. It actually gives us more useful information than just locus of control. That's why it's sometimes more important, more helpful, should I say, to call it space, sense of power and control over your experiences, over your life. So we've always known that there's a relationship between um, locus of control and thinking styles, but and, and this isn't this isn't based on any research that we have, and it isn't based on um, any specific tests that have been done. But just having gone through all 162 of the more recent emetophobia results from our survey, I can tell you this is fairly accurate with within five or ten percent this is a very good indication of more or less what happens it certainly is strong enough indication that you can use it with your clients and i'll produce a um a picture or board that you can use this on with your clients i think it's really really helpful to show them so what i've done here then i've got an all-round score up the left hand side of this chart for their thinking style score so let's say they add all, up all their thinking styles and divide them by 10 so they get an, a, a, an average let's say so only divide by 10 of this 10 of them but divide them down average them down so you get a score out of 10 and then along the bottom there you've got a locus control or the space quiz score obviously out of 30. and as you can see as you go from left to right Someone who scores, say, only two or three on the locus of control score is going to score really low on the thinking style score. In fact, on the next slide, I've shaded that in so you can see the severity of it. So as you know, someone's sense of power and control over their environment is not a fixed thing. It's not a fixed thing. It's a projection of their belief about basically how skillful they feel in a particular area. That's all it is. I talked the other day about a recent client I had I was working with in London, and she did the locus control quiz. She scored 23 or 25 the first week we did it. I met her a week later, exactly seven days later, and we just talked through a couple of the, the quiz questions, and she actually scored about 50% less just within one week. Now, she, I said, oh, have you, have you been back through the quiz? Have you been looking at your answer? She said, no, I haven't even looked at that page at all. So in other words, 50% of her locus of control quiz questions from one week before had changed in that one week. And they had changed only because she felt more powerful. Therefore, she was thinking in a more powerful way. It's not as if she'd run a marathon that week or she'd lost half a stone or she watched a video from Darren Brown and suddenly changed her mind about God or seance or, or mediums or anything. Generally speaking, because she felt more powerful, she scored better. Last week when I said to her, you know, I believe I could run a marathon or climb Everest, she went, oh no, no, I couldn't do that. Pff, no way. This week when I asked, she said, you know what, Rob? Yes, I could do that. Because it's a projection of how powerful a person feels. That's really interesting, it's really important that we realise these things aren't fixed. It's got nothing to do with the reality of whether she's fit enough to run a marathon or not, but everything to do with her attitude towards it. So someone's locus of control, someone's sense of power and control over their environment is about how confident they are 
about their beliefs about that situation or that environment we call it a domain obviously how confident they are what their beliefs are about that domain and therefore how skillful they feel about it so let's imagine that i'm skidding down the road in a car on on ice at the moment but i see at the moment okay if i feel really confident about my driving abilities and i feel really confident in my car then i'm likely to stay pretty calm even though i'm skidding and think whoops and just right the car and carry on going again without a second thought but if i've got a, either a really strong desire for control or i panic when i feel out of control i'm likely to employ lots of my thinking styles in that situation aren't i and panic a lot so if you look along the bottom of this locus of control um, score, the higher the score in an area, the more external you are, if you like, in an area, the more your thinking styles or your unhelpful thinking styles are going to come into play. The more you're going to catastrophize, the more you're over reacting, the more your own helplessness is going to come in. So this person, this person scored 30 on their locus of control quiz they're likely to score 10 out of 10 on most of the quizzes for unhelpful thinking styles. And this is borne out, of course, by our research, particularly into metaphobes, who score 8, 9, 10 out of 10 on almost all of them. And generally, they score at least 24 or 25 on the locus of control quiz. So if you come along this chart here to 24, 25, 26, and draw a line up, you'll see it comes out to about 9 out of 10 on the quizzes. See the next screen here. Let's say this person then scored 19, 19 and a half on the locus control quiz. They're likely to overreact and their thinking styles are likely to be about 6 out of 10 generally. 6 out of 10 generally if your locus control score is 19 or 20. Bring it down even further. And let's say they only scored 10 on the locus control quiz. They're very likely to never score more than sort of 2, 3, 4 overall in the thinking style quiz. They're likely to be quite a calm person. Because this person who scores 10, 10 out of 30 on the locus control quiz, because this person generally um, has high self-efficacy, feels strong, feels powerful, feels motivated, feels in control, they're not going to generate anxious thoughts, are they? They're not going to be brooding and worrying. They're not going to be hypervigilant. Oh my God, what happens if we get burgled tonight? Because this person feels powerful and in control. So that's the relationship between thinking styles and locus control. This is why people with a more internal locus score much lower on thinking style quizzes. Equally, people whose thinking styles, this is uh, people whose thinking styles um, are, are very, very high. So someone that's very emotional, someone who's quite catastrophic and emotionally out of control also has to be significantly external. Because let's say, let's say they were completely internal and they only scored 8 or 10, but let's say their emotions were 8, 9, 10 on everything, they would develop a sense of externality and powerlessness purely because, as you can imagine, their secondary control is very, very poor. If you think that secondary control is pretty much a person's emotional control, if they can't control their emotions, they are going to be external in that area. Anyway, very short video, but I hope that helps. And I hope this is something you can use with your clients just to show them the relationship between the, the why it's so important, not just to work on locus control, but as you calm the thinking styles down, you're helping yourself create a more internal locus because you're feeling more in control because your emotions aren't all over the place. Cheers, it's Rob here. Bye.